Today on Bridges, a story of a young man entrenched in an addiction and his mom who wouldn't quit praying. I'm glad you could join us for Bridges today where we bring you hope for the journey. I'm Monica Schmelter and today is an incredible, miraculous story of a young man who was really in bondage to an addiction and his mom who just wouldn't quit praying. And I'm so glad we have both of them here today. And Mary, it's so good to meet you and have you on Bridges today. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for coming. And this is your son, Blake Hamill. Yes, it is. Blake, it's good to have you back. It's great to be back. So Mary, we've had a chance uh, to talk to Blake about his story and you know, one of the things in my heart, one of the big prayer requests that we get are parents with prodigal children, adult yeah. prodigals. And, mm -hmm. and that's, that can be a really hard and an isolating journey. And I would love to hear from your perspective about you and your husband and how you became kind of aware of Blake's journey and your determination to pray for him. Growing up in a Christian home on a small farm in a small town, the values were very distinct and simple. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I came from, <laughs> as, as I get older, I realize what an idyllic family I had. Mm -hmm. um, it's rare still, it was even rare then. So I felt like if I raised my children in a godly home, took them to church, to VBS, camps, <laughs> yeah. all these things. Youth group. Youth group, yeah. it would all fall into place. Mm -hmm they grow up and have happy little lives with a little picket fence. Mm -hmm. And so um, it became apparent that there were some challenges that the teachers thought Blake had some control issues, some self-control issues, and that was fine. So we would deal with those. And then as time went on, fast forwarding to his last year in middle school, um, his personality changed. Uh, physically, he started looking different because he wanted to color his hair black and wear black and wear dark eye makeup. So I quickly became familiar with the term goth. Mm. And so it scared me. Um, I went to the school counselor and she said, you know, this is just part of life. These kids have to be, uh, have to express themselves. And this is how he's expressing himself. So, okay. So I feel like if the professionals say it's okay, it must be okay. Still a little concerned. Anyway, you you move along and you find out it's it's a little deeper and more scary than you thought it yeah. was. And it seemed like we went from a little bit of edginess to um, to a very frightening and dark place. Yeah, very that quickly. had to be really really hard for any parent. But especially, I think when you're a Christian and when you're praying and like you, and I didn't have an idyllic childhood, didn't live on a small farm, but I will say this, once I became a Christian, I definitely had the idea that if we prayed for our son, took him to church and did all the right things, that everything would fall into place. Like there would be no challenges. And I quickly learned like, that's not just always the case for parents. No. So that's that's a hard situation. Now, Blake, there may be some people watching who haven't met you or heard any of your story yet, but is what your mom's describing, do you remember that in, Absolutely. That in your life? Absolutely, yeah. I went through a really dark phase. Um, you know, if it was dark, I wanted it around me. And because I, I think I mentioned beforehand that I believed in God, but I believed that I was a lost cause. Yes. So I dressed, acted, um, lived as a lost cause. So when, you know, when you're wanting to wear black and dye your hair black and do the eye makeup, do the goth thing, mm -hmm. did that make you feel like you belonged or make you feel dark? Like what were you doing that for? So basically um, from an early age, uh, I didn't feel like I fit in. So I was often really afraid of rejection. I got rejected by um, one of my friends and um, I, it hurt so bad that I felt like that fear of rejection was such a powerful motivator that I just need to push people away so they didn't have the chance right. to push me away first. Mm -hmm. It's it's a way to prevent yourself, so to speak, from getting hurt. You just wall yourself off mm -hmm. and then you don't have to feel that or experience that again. Right. I've yeah. already compartmentalized myself here so nobody can place me there. Yeah. 
And, and that had to be incredibly hard for you. And I would think, Mary, as a mom, like none of us want our children to be hurt. Right. Like we would much rather take their pain and take their hurt than to see our children go through that. And you describe like in early years, self-control issues that the teacher thought. And I'm sure mm -hmm. you thought, well, if you pray and if you discipline, um, right, that that will right itself and mm -hmm. that it all come around. And, you know, when I think about you talking to the counselors and them saying, well, you know, there are these phases with kids. And for a lot of times that's true, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Kids go through phases and then they laugh years later, right? They look at pictures and think, oh, how ridiculous that I dress this way. Like, how stupid is that, <laughs> right? How dumb. But then sometimes it's not just that, like it goes deeper and it goes darker. So I can only imagine as a mom, you're kind of feeling like you're watching your son just descend into everything that you didn't want. You put it very succinctly, yes, that is true. And I feel like I was always chasing after something. I was chasing something new to try to steer away from this darkness and to steer him towards God and to steer him towards joy. I just wanted my son to be happy. Of course, of course. And you wanted him to live a clean and a godly life. You wanted all those things. And, you know, um, one of the reasons I wanted to do this show and highlight the journey of a prodigal in addiction is to bring hope and also to bring awareness because some of you, you know, all your children are on the honor roll and they're all doing well and praise God, this is what we all want, right? But sometimes people can do all the right things and that's not how it seems to be working out at first. And I always feel badly for the parents who like that's not their journey, right? Because the parents where everything's going right, they while they're grateful to God, they still think it has a lot to do with them. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> uh, and sometimes, you know, that's just not always the case. Right. Sometimes there are other factors and it's hard. And I, I hope that this show will help parents be more supportive of parents who are going through some hard life issues and challenges. So I'm thinking you prayed a lot. I did pray a lot. Um, and you said something about, and to the effect that other people you hope that other people can be sensitive to those going through it. That's what I would encourage someone who was in my shoes to do the opposite of what I did. Mm -hmm. I felt shame mm -hmm. and I felt I was a failure. So um, for years, I would not reach out to others. There were a few people I was very close to who understood to as, as much as they could, but, um, I felt like I let Satan become, have sort of his way in making me feel depressed and discouraged mm -hmm. and a fail, like a failure, mm -hmm. yeah. And how did that like affect your husband? Was his experience the same as yours or were you too able to talk about Blake and what was happening or? Mm. It was difficult. Mm -hmm. We come from very different backgrounds. So our approaches are very different as well. Yeah. And you're not alone in that, right? Because mm -hmm. most right. women and men have very different ideas on parenting, right? Mm -hmm. um, I thought my husband and I came from somewhat similar backgrounds, but when there's a trial, you just really find out how different <laughs> it can be, right? Yes. You know, my yeah. husband's like, tough, you know, everything's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I'm like, crying on the floor. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Pick me up. I melted into a puddle. Like I, this cannot be happening. So there's all of that. And, and that's hard as well. Mm -hmm. um, but did you ever like struggle, Mary, with not knowing what to pray? Absolutely. Oh, sometimes I would just walk through the house saying the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what else to do. And there's a scripture in Romans that talks about how the Holy Spirit does intercede for us with moans that we can understand. And those were the times I knew. Yeah. I would sit on the couch in the living room because that was my go-to quiet place and just sit there saying, God, I don't know what else to say, mm -hmm. but I know you know what's going on. Right, right. And I'm so thankful there. for that verse in Romans, mm -hmm. right? because we don't always know what to pray. And I remind myself sometimes, even when I think I know what to pray, I may not know, right? 
He knows. And mm -hmm. so that's part of the work of the Holy Spirit is to pray those things that we don't even have words for. Were you aware that Blake was, when he first started delving into drugs, were you aware that that was happening? I was suspicious. Mm -hmm. um, somewhat of, it, of an ostrich also. Um, like putting your head in the sand? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So as Blake said one time, I believe in an interview with you, that he, it was blatantly clear that he was in trouble um, was when he was arrested for the first time. And he was under age at that time, fortunately. So that's how I looked at it at the time at least. And so I went to the rescue and we hired an attorney and got help for him. But it was, it was, it was like you ran into a wall um, and you got sucked into that wall and you didn't know how to get out. Right, right, because no, none of us ever think this is gonna happen to us. And I remember, Blake, you told me about that experience, being in the back of that police car, that you saw your mom's face. She didn't have to say a word. I, I knew exactly, you know, the hurt and the dismay that was on her face. Mm -hmm. I mean, it read like a book. Yeah, and even though you were doing wrong, you felt badly about that, didn't you? The Absolutely. look on her face. Yeah. Were you I, able to articulate that to her? I think I was later, but in the midst of addiction, I don't think my sorry meant anything. Yeah. You know? Well, because I think that's the thing, right? If, if a person's entrenched in an addiction, there's so many lies. I think parents and right spouses, if that's the case, don't know what to believe. And so sometimes it's just easier to think it's probably all a lie, yeah. right? than to even give a moment of trust. Did you feel awful about the lack of trust that you had or? I did, I did. I used to think, you know, if I look him straight in the eye and I make him look at me straight in the eye, I'll know if he's lying. Mm -hmm. and then I realized one day, I can't believe anything you say. Exactly, and it doesn't matter how convincing it is. No. That's what I've heard. So every good. parent, every spouse, every person entrenched on addiction on this show has said, you just have to think it's a lie yeah. because it, you just can't let yourself believe it. They had to be awful. Yes, it's painful. Yeah. You, you, you look at this person that you held as a baby and you had all these dreams and hopes and then mm -hmm. suddenly well, someone tells you it's going to get better. And then one day you wake up and you think it's not going to get better. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. awful. It's awful. We've got to take a break. I want you to stay with us because this story is far from over. There's a lot of answered prayer on the way and a lot of reasons to give you hope for the journey. Join the Bridges community on Facebook. Visit Facebook and search for Bridges with Monica. We would love to connect with you. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. It takes training. It takes discipline. And so when you're fighting that good fight of the faith, you take your story, whatever it is, and you saturate it in faith and you fight for it. Visit monicaschmelter.com to schedule Monica to speak at your next event. Don't miss another episode of Bridges. Subscribe to our YouTube channel today where you can find all of Monica's latest teachings. Just visit youtube.com, search Monica Schmelter, and click subscribe. Once subscribed, click the bell icon to get notified when a new episode is available. Thanks for watching Bridges. My guests today are mother and son, Mary Hamill and her son, Blake Hamill. And we are really bringing you hope for the journey. This is a story that has a lot of dark turns and, and lots of darkness, but God heard and was answering prayers all along the way, even though nobody really knew it uh, for much of the time. And so Mary, you're this, you grew up on this, in this idyllic home and small town, you had all these hopes and dreams, as we all do when you grow up and you do all the right things and your kids are just gonna do the right things. And mm -hmm. that really wasn't your story with your son, Blake, who is here and doing really well now, but- um, <laughs> Praise God. Yeah, yeah, praise God. It wasn't always the case. No. He was 
entrenched in addiction for years. Yes. And it had to be very long and dark and hard for you as a mom. But you kept on praying. Yes. Tell me about yes. that. If you are a Christian and you run against hard times, we all know that that's when the, me the rubber meets the road and you either cling to those promises of God or you pretty much have to walk away. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't walk away. I still needed to have hope. I always had hope as long as he was breathing. Yes, um, yes. I also had a younger son and he was very valuable to me. And I had a husband and I had friends and I thought I've, I've got to move forward no matter what that looks like. Even if it means I had to come to the point where I realized that my son might not make it. Mm -hmm. And what was that going to be like? Yeah. I didn't stay in that place, mm -hmm. but I had to get to the point where I realized that was a very, very, very real possibility. Mm -hmm. It had nearly happened more times than I still know to this day. Yeah. And so when you say might not make it, you mean like maybe pass away from an overdose or something accident drug related, or drug something or drug or alcohol. related. Yes. yes, we had to come to his rescue physically very many times. Mm -hmm. um, I was always glad he reached out. Of course. I know, I don't know if it was hard for him or not. I would imagine it was. Was it hard for you, Blake? Very hard. It, it had to be life or death for me to reach out, but I always knew I could count on them. And that meant a lot. Yeah. I would think that had to be such a lifeline for you. As dark as it was, at least you knew you had parents that loved you. Mm -hmm. And that while they didn't agree with what you were doing, they loved you and that they'd be there for you. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, not everybody has that. And no. I, and I knew I had great parents. Yes. Um, often think, I thought that I wasn't worth being their son. Yeah, I, I was. That's what I, I was just getting ready to ask you. Did that, on some level, make you feel even more guilty because here you are in this dark hole, and you've got these parents who love you so much, and you did you think, oh my goodness, I'm putting them through so much? Absolutely, I thought I'm I'm such a black sheep. Mm -hmm. Like I don't deserve parents like this. Mm -hmm. I don't deserve a family like this. Mm -hmm. You know, as a child, I often thought. Am I adopted? <laughs> but found out I'm much like my mom and my father as, as I wasn't deceived for, for a long time. Yeah, yeah. I, and I think that, I know that you know now that you're totally worth all of that love and all of that support. We all are. Yeah, we come full are. circle. I mean, it's yeah. now a beautiful story, but yes. at the time it was yeah. a lot of dismay and you know, chaos. Yeah. And again, you know, the only reason I'm wanting to highlight this is because there's so much for all of us to learn and there's so much hope in praying, right? And so much hope because for our children and for prodigal children, eternity is at stake and the battle for their soul is worth everything that any one of us would have to go through uh, doesn't mean that it's easy. And there's a lot to learn. I would imagine about the heart of the father mm -hmm. loving a prodigal, mm -hmm. wanting to bring a wayward son or daughter back home. What did you learn about the heart of the father in Blake's prodigal journey? I learned that he is patient. Yeah. I learned that he's very kind even though I questioned that many times. Mm -hmm. um, I learned that his ways are definitely higher than mine. Um, if, if I could have looked at this from the other side and seen where it was going to end, I would have seen it a lot sooner. Mm -hmm. But knowing that his ways are so much higher and greater yeah. and that beauty does come from ashes, mm -hmm. so much beauty. And I also found that I could only receive help truly from someone who had walked this path before me. So that helped me realize that regardless of the outcome, whether Blake came out on the other side of this alive and well and whole, 
or he didn't, that I had to use what I'd experienced, if I could, to help somebody else. Yeah. So that nothing yeah. is wasted. Yeah. And that's, you know, what you just said, right? It's just a few sentences, but it's a really hard thing to say. It's very hard to look at a situation that concerns someone that we love and say, however this works out, right? Mm -hmm. If I get my prayers answered, and you got your miracle. I mean, he's right there. <laughs> he's a wonderful dad and husband and leads a ministry and helps men recover. So you got the miracle. Mm -hmm. But you had to come to the place that you had to say, even if I don't, God, you're still God. Yes. And I still trust you. Yes. Yeah. And that, that's a hard place for anybody, parent, spouse, whatever. I would have to think that took you some time to get there. Oh, yes. Yes, it did. Yeah. And it's even helped in circumstances that I've faced since then. Yeah to just accept his will. Yeah, yeah. And to accept it as what's highest and what's best when it doesn't look like that to us, yeah. right? Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, there's just some real hard things about life that I know now, right, at this age, that when I was in my 20s, I would just say, oh, God will never let that happen. Like, no, that is mm. no, no, <laughs> no. And I've learned, yes, yes, yes. And he teaches me all these lessons and mm -hmm. um, I need to be willing to learn those lessons. And um, that saying, I surrender all, is harder than just saying the words. It's, it's a lot of pieces. What words of wisdom would you give Mary to a mom that's just hurting right now? And she's in that place that you were before you got this miracle. She doesn't know how this prodigal journey or how this child's struggling with addiction, she doesn't know what, will, what way it will go, but the prodigal's still alive, <laughs> so there's still hope. What would you say to her or maybe to a dad? What would you say to him? Mm -hmm. Well, while you might want to turn your back on God because you feel like he's turned his back on you, mm -hmm. he hasn't. Um, just keep digging into the word, keep praying, and don't isolate yourself. Mm -hmm. Do try to find someone who has is in this journey or has been through this journey and and be honest with them don't don't let shame control your emotions and your reactions and how about for pa parents like you who have other children how do you keep supporting them and showing up for their school conferences and sporting activities. Like there's so many demands on parents. And mm -hmm. if you've got one child that's just not doing well, I would think the tendency would be to put all your attention there. Mm. I'm not sure I can answer that. I, I, I think that we tried our best and we only had one other child. Yeah. So many families have multiples. Mm -hmm. I honestly don't know how they handle it, but The Father just gives us grace for the day. Yep, yep. And, and that's all we all get is yeah. just the day. How about the day that you and your husband had to determine after uh, Blake's you know, numerous relapses and different things that you had to tell him that he couldn't stay at your house anymore? What was that like for you? There had been a terrible event that led up to that. Mm -hmm. And I knew that if I continued enabling my son, my marriage would crumble. Mm -hmm. And I also came to the point where I recognized all, all the years of, no matter how bad I wanted Blake to be well, he wasn't. Yeah. And there was really nothing else I could yeah. do. Yeah. So I, I guess, I won't say acquiesced, I just became supportive of the decision mm -hmm. that the worst thing in the world that I dreaded ever doing was going to be the thing I had to do. Oh. And so, yes, it, it ripped my heart out. Yeah. But by this point, I did know of some resources and some safe places. Mm -hmm. So 
knowing those things ahead of time made, made a big difference. Yeah. yeah, and nothing we're talking about on that side of the journey was easy. But this side of the journey, God has answered your prayers. Yes. And has. your son is fully whole and restored. And Blake, what would you say to your mom and to your dad who prayed for you for all those years? Thank you for never giving up. Uh, thank you for constantly coming to save me over and over. And then uh, above all, thank you for finally putting your foot down and saying enough is enough because that was what helped the, tra the trajectory of my life changing forever mm -hmm. because I knew there wasn't any wiggle room left. Yeah. I knew it was time for me to seek out freedom or go to the grave. Mm -hmm. Do you think, Blake, you could have ever become the husband, the dad, the leader of Renewed Life Ministries in Murfreesboro? Could, could that have ever happened without their prayer support and their tough decision? Absolutely not. I mean, I just, I know with God all things are possible, but I just, I don't think I would have lived past, you know, gosh, 19 years old without yeah. them you know, constantly coming to help me. I mean, I went through so many health issues and so many um, awful scenarios that they helped me out of that man, I really think I would have died. Yeah, but you didn't. I didn't. And you're here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you're serving and you're leading and you have a great relationship with your parents and your family, yeah. your wife and your children. Thank you so much for coming, for sharing your story. And Mary, thank you. I know that this had to be hard for you, but I so appreciate you coming and sharing your story. We appreciate you giving us this format. Thanks for watching Bridges. Don't miss another episode of Bridges. Subscribe to our YouTube channel today where you can find all of Monica's latest teachings. Just visit youtube.com, search Monica Schmelter, and click subscribe. Once subscribed, click the bell icon to get notified when a new episode is available. Thanks for watching Bridges. Join the Bridges community on Facebook. Visit Facebook and search for Bridges with Monica. We would love to connect with you. It takes training. It takes discipline. And so when you're fighting that good fight of the faith, you take your story, whatever it is, and you saturate it in faith and you fight for it. Visit monicashmelter.com to schedule Monica to speak at your next event. Life can be hard and days can be long. So if you're looking for hope for the journey, monicashmelter.com is a great place to get started. On monicashmelter.com, you'll find Monica's teachings on demand. And if you're looking to really grow your faith, you'll find online extras are available with every teaching. So don't wait another day. Get started now at monicashmelter.com and you will find hope for the journey.